Hey, bullied by local hosting providers, the shady practices. Someone said GoDaddy. Very excited. Let's see what happens here. Chapter one, the unforeseen beginning. In the fall of 2019, my journey began inconspicuously. It's weird that it would start conspicuously. Honestly, to tell you the truth, the real estate agency owner, distressed by his online site's stagnation, reached out to me. His WordPress, one could say that it was, you were quite conspicuous with your skills. Anyways, his WordPress site, once a bustling hub for daily announcements, had hit an inexplicable wall. Despite his limited technology, he sensed something amiss when new posts ceased to appear, leaving his customers and business in limbo. As I delved into the site's back end, I discovered a peculiar constraint. The hosting provider, known for their unlimited offerings, had imposed an obscure file count limit a detail buried in the fine print. This limitation had quietly throttled the site's growth, leaving its digital presence crippled. Let me repeat, it was not a storage limit, it was promised to be unlimited. But no, it was a file count limit. Chapter two. Armed with the client's go-ahead, I embarked on a digital excavation. Sifting through years of accumulated data, I unearthed and cleared redundant files, freeing up a much needed space. This initial triumph opened the door to a broader opportunity, a complete website makeover. We chose a vibrant modern design that mirrored the agency's warmth and appeal. The redesign process was meticulous, involving a careful selection of fonts, colors, layouts that resonated with the brand's heartwarming ethos. Commonly referred to as going on to WordPress micro Marketplace and paying $15.99 for a theme. Meticulous. I combed through hundreds, if not thousands of themes to find one just for you. Upon relaunch, the site shimmered anew with its user-friendly interface and captivating visual reigniting the client's online presence. His joy was palpable. His words of gratitude were a melody to my ears. It was a fleeting but sweet victory as his checks hit the bank, baby. Chapter three, the unexpected journey. Lord of the Rings reference still going on in my head. However, just five days post launch, a shocking email landed in my inbox. The site was down, accused of exceeding some nebulous quota. I poured over the server logs, combing through data and analytics, but the evidence eluded me. The site was a simple affair, far from a resource hog. The conundrum was a cryptic enigma, leaving both my client and me in a haze of disbelief and frustration. Chapter four, the battle with customer support. Approaching the hosting provider customer support felt like entering a lion's den. Marketed as offering unlimited disk space, their plan's reality now seemed a cruel jest. The conversation quickly soured, evolving into a barrage of unprofessional remarks, unhelpful suggestions, and even yelling and insults. Please tell me this is GoDaddy. Come on, GoDaddy. Let's go, GoDaddy. I was still a green developer back then, just starting, so I was overwhelmed. Wasn't the support meant to help me? Why was I getting yelled at and insulted? <laughs> Oh, my friend, my friend, my friend. That is very funny. To imagine customer support of a hosting provider to be on your side. <laughs> you could tell he was green. Totally the wrong approach. As I was thinking about all those questions, they gave me their final advice to seek an international hosting provider and ask me to stop using them, which was delivered with an almost disdainful air, leaving me stunned and infuriated. Okay, just change, just change hosting. Chapter five, the plot thickens. After days of meticulous debugging, a revelation dawned. The rank math SEO plugin, a familiar tool in my arsenal, emerged as unexpected antagonist. This discovery was baffling. I had employed this plugin numerous times without incident, even in cheaper hosting plans. The variable, it seemed, was the hosting environment. Activating the plugin here was like tripping a wire, triggering an instantaneous shutdown. The so-called unlimited hosting was a facade, a marketing mirage. The customer support might have been Rick. This, this sounds a little bit Ricky. Chapter six, the tr strategic retreat. A tactical shift was imperative. Just change hosting companies. I presented the case for Hostinger to my client, a blend of desperation and optimism in my pitch. He agreed, albeit with reservations. The migration was cautious, but ultimately triumphed. Hostinger wasn't just a new hosting solution. It was our digital lifeline. The site's performance soared. The supportive environment was a refreshing change, not sponsored, though a part of me wished it was, considering the stark contrast in service quality. <laughs> Get the bag, baby. This is a great story. Hosting, if you want to sponsor this video, uh, ooh, totally would work out here. Chapter seven, years have passed. The unexpected call. Time had smoothed the ripples of our past struggles. It's been more than four years. The green developer is now a senior developer and has gone through even more experiences and stories. But out of the blue, a frantic call from the client shattered the calm. In the chaos of managing his expanding business, my old client and friend now had overlooked a crucial step, confirming the receipt 
of his domain name purchases. Absolute rookie mistake. Even though they received the payment and could see it was from him, they didn't enable the domain for him and ultimately released them. This oversight led to a devastating loss. One of the domains was snapped up within hours of becoming available. The buyer, who could get access to one of the most wanted domains locally, it was a mix of city plus the field of work. It was wanted domain around here and people even offered to buy it. Hmm. Who but who? Do you think purchased this one? The other domain was still free and ready to be purchased. My client had difficulty, so I offered to get it for him and transfer it to him later. But in a surreal twist, both my client and I, in our respective bids to reclaim the lost domain, ended up purchasing it. The baffling scenario unfolded as we both received confirmation emails, each proclaiming us as the rightful owner. How could this be? I, that's why I had to read it twice, because I was like... I must have misread that. That doesn't make any sense. The situation spiraled into a bizarre stalemate, a digital puzzle that defied logic and precedence. Chapter 9, Reflections and Revelation. Reflecting on this digital odyssey, I recognize it is more than a sequence of technical challenges. It was a journey marked by resilience, the necessity to adapt, and the relentless quest for solutions. The domain saga is still going on. We haven't told them anything yet. We wanted to see what their last shady move will be. You're ending here? You can't do that! First off, it sounds like crimes were committed with this whole unlimited hosting, but then actually not being unlimited. Second off, it seems like you, you have extortion or some sort of blackmail. In minimum, you have fraud. Two people winning a bid. That's fraud. One of the lowest layers in, the, in Dante's Inferno. What's going on here? You can't just... You can't edge me like that. I'm edge. I'm fully edged. I'm ready. I'm ready to go for hours like Bill Gates asked. I guess I found my best edging experience for 2024. I should probably share that one with Microsoft Edge. I am thoroughly disappointed that we didn't even get any form of resolution. Okay, no, I don't want to see Dune Chapter 2 of the local hosting provider saga. I just wanted to feel sweet release, okay? That's all I wanted in my life. Because, you know what? I think there's a natural disdain in all of us for hosting provide for whatever reason all my previous past experiences with hosting is just the worst now the new the, the new school of hosting you know we're talking like fly and shuttle it seems different like i have this like i i st i just have this hate inside of me like there's no company i feel like i have an unreasonable dislike more than godaddy like right now if godaddy offered me $10,000 to say something nice about them, I would take $10,000 and I'd say something nice about them, but I would feel really bad about where my morals were. I would just let you know that right now. I would feel very bad about myself and I would look down upon myself quite a bit. I, I would still certainly take the $10,000. I'm gonna take that bag, okay? But I'm gonna feel really bad about it, okay? Let's take them out reverse GameStop style, let's go. I mean, 10K is 10K, baby, okay? I'm just saying. You know, you, got, you gotta be honest with yourself. Like, I've already been very honest. I told Kick, Kick.com, gambling. I hate gambling. I think gambling is pretty much repugnant. I did say $2 million for two years. I'll stream for you guys. Okay, I have a, I have a price on Kick that's much higher than GoDaddy. Much higher. VS Code, $1 million. I will use VS Code and tweet positive things twice a month for the next two years for $1 million, Microsoft. That's it. It's only... Microsoft, look at this. Just... just like, look at this, Microsoft. Look at it. Your net income was 22.29 bill, okay? I'm asking for one quarter, okay? I want one divided by 22290, okay? I want 0. .00004 four of your quarterly income and you have years of appreciative tweets and uplifting suggestions. Vim APM, never heard of her. Who is she? Don't even know her. We don't even need to measure our APM. Okay, because we use we use VS Code. I'm gonna do VS Code mouse a actions per minute. Okay, how many characters are you highlighting per minute with your mouse APM? That's what we're gonna find out. We could just saying the name. Let's think about it, Microsoft. I mean, come on. I I want it. You want it. Let's do it. Let's do this together, Microsoft.